So this very this the last Trump clip I have for you tonight is about the Ukraine war. So and I think Trump has a good take on the Ukraine war. So listen to what he says. The biggest tax decrease, tax cuts. Of course, it was the biggest ever. History of our country, bigger than the Reagan cuts by a lot. <laughs> Everything he does and, is the biggest uh, we and would best. Cut them even we know that. Further and also reduce debt. We were going to sell our oil and gas to Europe at good prices, but they were good. Instead, they did uh, Nord Stream 2 with Russia, and I stopped it. It was totally dead. And, and then, then they Biden blew it came up. Along and he approved it. Then he says, you are very, very nice to Russia. No, no. Putin <laughs> used to say, they always say you're so nice. You are the worst thing that ever happened to us. But I got along with them. I got along with them. But... Uh, you are the worst thing. Think of it. I stopped Nord Stream 2. That's the biggest thing they've ever done. I stopped. Just as a side note, when when I watch Trump talk at length, I understand why people like John Favreau, who wrote speeches for Obama, hate him. Because he just rambles. It was dead, and then Biden approved it. So you tell me who's a little tougher on just that one thing alone, sanctions, everything else. And they would have never gone into Ukraine, that I can tell you. Not even a little chance. Of course not. <laughs> and, you know, for two reasons, just uh, while we're on this, for two reasons. Number one, as I said, you can't go in. You can't go in. I, what I will do is so bad. No, you won't. Yes, I will. What I will do, I told him, is so bad. It's so bad. I don't want to do it. He goes, no way. I said, way, way. <laughs> and he didn't believe me, but he believed me 10%. He believed me. Do you think Trump told Putin he would have him assassinated like he did that Soleimani guy? I mean, I'm not saying that's okay, but it would be a good bargaining chip. Mr. Senator, he believed me 10%. That's all we needed. That's all we needed. 10% is enough. And there was never any movement. I mean, you know, we, we proved that for four years. There was no thought of that. And uh, the other reason he wouldn't have gone in, because we had oil at $40 a barrel. At $40 a barrel, he doesn't have the money to do the war. And he wouldn't have been able now, this to. this is a point and to pay it's attention to. And now $100 and going higher. And it was $100. It was $115 a little while ago when he started this thing. So he had so much money, he'll be the only guy to make a lot of money off a of war. And uh, he wouldn't have been able to do that with us because there was no money. You couldn't have made the money at $40 a barrel. So that would have never happened, but it wouldn't have happened just for the first reason, too. I said, you can't do it. And I'll quickly cut New Hampshire. Again. So I wanted to investigate that claim, right? What's What's been happening with the whole oil market and Russian oil? And, you know, I, it's tough to find data on this that you can trust, but I think I got some pretty good stuff. So let's let's go into the weeds on this, too. So check this out. This is a here let me let me remove this real quick. This is a map of the world and what it shows as you can see is 2021 barrels of oil and the the, the dark blue on the right is you know well I I can't even read those numbers they're so small but it's it's a lot. <laughs> It's like 1,600. So on the far right, let's just, let's get back to this. 1.6 million. The blue is 1.6 million. The light blue, lighter blue is 1.4, 1.2, and it goes all the way down to 200K. You can see a lot of these countries are yellow. So we're getting like 200K barrels from them. But if you look at Russia, and this is, remember, this is 2021, we're getting about 400K barrels from Russia in 2021. Now, I heard a rumor that Russia was still able to sell their oil to, um, to other countries, but let's keep going a little bit further into some of this data that I, I extracted today. So this is a little bit from Statista about how um, the U.S. imports oil. And the first part, it says the U United States is the world's largest producer of crude oil, producing 12.108 million barrels per day. The main oil producing states in the U.S. are Alaska, New Mexico, North Dakota, Oklahoma, and Texas. Now, in Trump's rant, he talked about removing the Anwar stuff from Alaska. 
And so that checks out. I mean, Alaska is the highest producing state for oil in the U.S. Um, and Texas. The U.S. surpassed both Russia and Saudi Arabia in 2018 to become the world's largest crude oil producer. So it was actually under Obama that that happened. Wow. While the United States is the largest producer of oil, it's also the largest consumer of oil. The U.S. consumes about 19.69 million barrels of crude per day. Because this is more oil than the U.S. produces each day, the oil must be imported from other countries. So I wonder if that includes the military. I would imagine it does. But I know that the military is a very big consumer of crude oil. According to data from the U.S. Energy and Information Administration, the United States imported between 8.1 to 8.8 million barrels of crude oil per day from July to December 2021. Just over a million barrels per day come from OPEC, led by roughly 550,000 barrels per day from Saudi Arabia. The U.S. also imports nearly 7.5 million bar barrels of crude oil per day from non-OPEC nations. Chief among these is Canada which supplies the U.S. with approximately 4.7 million barrels per day, significantly more than any other nation. That is interesting. Um, so this next, uh, this next little piece of data I got here for you is also pretty interesting. And uh, what it says is, as of January 14th 2023 the largest volume of russian so this is oil shipments from russia daily from 2021 to 2023 by destination russian crude oil shipments went to china 55 million metric tons which countries started buying more oil from russia so th these are the i'm not going to read all of this but these are kind of the the points i wanted to touch on faced with western sanctions on russia russia increased crude oil shipments to china india turkey and egypt and the united arab emirates in fact, China contributed the most to Russia's oil export revenue since the war in Ukraine at approximately 6.3 billion euros as of February 2023. However, the oil price ceiling imposed in December 2023 could make it more difficult for Russia to export to non-Western countries too. This is because the policy also applies to tankers that belong to the sanctioning countries as well as those insured or financed by them. For instance, Russian oil cannot be transported to Turkey for a price above market cap if it is insured by the EU. So this is where it gets complicated and the data is really hard to to come by because you know the the invasion happened as of 2022 and the data I mean this data is from 2021 to 2023 but it it doesn't really break it out in a way that makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to cap this off by showing you this. Without plan B, Europe clings on to Russia oil and gas. Isn't that interesting? That would imply that Europe is still buying Russian energy despite our sanctions. So here's what this part says. Here. I'm still trying to decide on the best view for this. And yeah, maybe this one is the best for this. So since the onset of the war in Ukraine, Western countries rolled out a barrage of economic and financial sanctions against Russia. The objective was to cripple President Vladimir Putin's ability to wage war. The flow of fossil fuels through pipelines was curtailed. Russian oil was put under a cap price of $60 by G7, a group made of some of the world's largest economies. However, Investigations by the NGO Global Witness have brought up that Europe has increased its purchase of Russian liquefied natural gas. Belgium and Spain are the second and third largest importers of liquefied natural gas from Russia after China, while supply of fossil fuels via pipeline to Europe has diminished significantly. LNG shipments for Russia have been ramped up. Between January and July 2023, the EU bought 52% of Russia's exports compared to 49% in 2022 and 39% in 2021. That's what our war in Ukraine is getting for us. That's what the war is getting for us. It's making Russia rich. Trump it was not wrong about that. Next slide. The Financial Times also claims that Russia could be exploiting a loophole to overcome the price cap. According to Financial Times, shippers are selling Russian crude at below the $60 per barrel 
but then offset the price with larger fees. Moreover, the discount margin has been narrowing this summer and at points, Russian oil has traded above the cap under pressure from further production cuts from OPEC. Russian barrels could become more expensive. Oh, isn't this great, guys? Aren't you glad we invested in this war in Ukraine to cripple Russia? I'm sure that's what it was about. Continuing. Spain's case is surprising given it had built a large infrastructure network to import natural gas via pipeline from Algeria across a narrow stretch of the Mediterranean Sea. Political relations soured in the last few years and trade consequently suffered. It now relies on LNG shipments from more expensive producers given they are further away and lack pipelines which are more cost efficient. In 2021, before Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Algeria accounted for 47% of natural gas imports. 20% alone came through the Maghreb Europe pipeline. The next suppliers, such as Russia and the US, made much smaller contributions. Now Spain is buying up 18% of Russian LNG exports, according to Global Witness data from KPLER. The key problem is that Europe has started implementing sanctions on Russia without a plan. We are approaching two years since war broke out, and there is no coherent strategy for energy. Member states have shunned alternatives from Germany's turn away from nuclear to political friction with producers such as Algeria, Iran, and Venezuela, aka the U.S. is sanctioning them. Arguments that trading with these countries will bolster authoritarian regimes fall apart when Europe is buying from Qatar and straight up funding the coffers of President Vladimir Putin. So I just wanted to show you that again to illustrate that we are getting nothing from our war with Ukraine. In fact, it's just making Russia richer 